This podcast is brought to you by WTOE Radio at throughourise.org. Welcome to Looking Good Without Looking, an interactive live show about fashion and personal style with your host, Linda Zani Thomas. Linda is the author of the Looking Good Without Looking Guides to Personal Style for Men and Women, published in the Braille Monitor. Get the latest fashion news, makeup trends, and shopping scoops, plus expert advice on bringing out the best in you. Here's Linda. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the big summer show of the Looking Good Without Looking show. We call it the big summer show because we are going to be off next month of July. So we are compiling both shows into this huge show. And we have a very exciting guest coming up later on. That is Cheryl Echeverria, who is the owner of Echeverria Travel. And she has her own show on WTOE, Through Our Eyes. And you can watch her show on a different Wednesday of the month. Cheryl will be my guest. We're going to be talking about vacation, what you should take, what you shouldn't take, and some tips if you are going on a cruise. I just got back from one, and Cheryl booked me on it, and we're going to talk to Cheryl a little bit later in the show. But we have a lot more to report on. First of all, we're going to be following up on some of our recent stories with some real good scoops for you. Of course, we have all the latest tips, trends, and deals on what you should and should not buy now if you want the best deal. We also are going to be talking about stores that serve a a multi-purpose that are in your community. And we're going to be highlighting highlighting one such store, which is Town & Country Apothecary in Ridgewood, New Jersey. This is a much-loved town institution right in the middle of town. And perhaps you live in a rural area or somewhere where it's not easy to get to a mall. And there's a store like this in your town. We're going to tell you why you should look around your downtown and what you just might find, like we find, at Town & Country. So we have a lot to talk about. If you would like to ask a question tonight, please call in to 888-572-0141. Be happy to talk to you live on air and answer any questions you might have or if you want to give us any tips or comments please feel free to call in at any time lenny and Lori are back at wtoe headquarters somewhere in north jersey and we're all planning for what looks like a hot summer so let's start with some of the top trends that we're seeing for ladies especially ladies who have good legs And good legs only, people. The hottest trend right now in sundresses is a dress with a high-low hem. That is a hem that comes to the knee in the front and then is pretty long in the back, almost like a maxi dress in the back. Because if you think about this, it causes kind of an envelope effect around your legs. It really puts the spotlight on your legs. So if you have great legs, why not wear this trend? The trend is being worn with flat sandals, not flip-flops, but kind of a dressy sandal, flat sandal. Seeing a lot of sandals this year, ladies, with metallic accents and definitely a strap in the back. So no flip-flops with that look, but that's the high-low dress. That is the hottest thing. For guys, you know, I'm not seeing anything really uh, that's really standing out for guys this year. We'll be getting into that more in the fall because when we come back in late August, we are going to be talking about the fall colors from Pantone that come out and all the hottest tips on fall fashion. 
So that is a trend. And here's some tips and deals for you. First of all, what you should be buying this year or this month, which is coming up is going to be July. You should be buying tools in July. Father's Day, the sale price sales on sales price on tools was a little bit high. They really go on sale in July. So guys, if you're looking for tools, go out and buy them in July. Remember that July is also a non-gift giving month. So you may see some jewelry sales, especially at the department stores for 4th of July, the 4th of July sales. Now, where has the best 4th of July sale been? Has it been at the department stores? Not really. Some of the smaller stores have had better sales historically. And the last two years, the BB store, B-E-B-E, and I know that's a favorite of uh, the younger crowd, they have had some terrific sales around 4th of July. So why not take a look at BB and some of the smaller stores in the mall? Department stores, you know, they just kind of want to want to bring you in on that hot weekend. The sales aren't really all that great, but you should look at sandals while you're there because sandals are also on sale right now. And in August is your time to buy sunglasses. So just wait a little bit more and start picking up some of your th summer things. Now, July, end of July to beginning of August is two great places you should visit if you want great deals. Number one, Target. They do the best job of anybody on transitional clothes, clothes that transition you from summer to fall. So more deeper, rich colors, but still in cottony, lighter materials. They do a terrific job, really. Everybody go out and check Target out in July, and you'll see what I mean. And of course, we have to get ready for the, the mecca of all sales, which is the Nordstrom half year, yearly sale. Now, a lot of people hear me say that and say, I can't afford to shop at Nordstrom. Oh, you can now. Because if you want a quality on-trend item at the greatest price it will be, if you want to buy just that one piece, and a lot of the pieces are under $50, under $25, under $100, it will take you through the season and you will have something of high quality that's absolutely on-trend. For example... Save your money, Uggs lovers, because Nordstrom is notorious for this sale. They always discount Uggs, and they are the only person that does it, and they do it for a couple of weeks only. The sale is usually over the first week in August. Stay tuned for that. I don't have the information because, you know, we're kind of uh, doing it a little bit earlier than we usually do. But that is a, a do not miss that sale, and that is for men, women, teens, everybody. A little tip for you. Also go online to Nordstrom.com for that sale and pay close attention, especially in the shoe department. If they say it is an online Nordstrom exclusive, they have such a great relationship with shoe and other manufacturers that they are able to get exclusive colors and styles of the best, best looks and they discount them. So they not only have a discount, but they have something very exclusive. If you see something that you like that's a Nordstrom exclusive, guys too, especially for the shoes, buy it right away because those things will disappear. They will not be back because those are one-time only buys from the manufacturer. Let's see what else I have to tell you about. Oh, great perfume that I like right now that just came out. It's by Oleg Cassini. Now, Oleg Cassini, that name has been around a long time. He was one of the chief designers for Nancy Reagan. He's been around a long time, finally came out with a fragrance. It is fantastic, ladies. It's really a beautiful fragrance. And if you buy a bottle right now, it's an introductory purchase. They give you this giant, like, paperweight size faux diamond which is, you know, who doesn't need a paperweight size faux diamond? Even Lenny needs that. So check out Cassini when you're out there. New fragrance, very, very nice. I really like it, and I'm very, very tough on fragrances, as you know. Again, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to call in, 888-572-0141 is the number. I'd like to do a follow-up on a couple of things and some earth-shaking news, and then we'll take a little break, Lenny. Right? Okay, 
Well, I would like to report on something that's happening at the Jersey Shore. Now, I asked Lori, who's back at the studio. She likes to go to the shore. She really doesn't care for the ocean, for the shore too much. But I have to tell you, if you're going to Wildwood this year, people, do not wear baggy pants on the boardwalk or you will be evicted. You cannot go on the boardwalk with droopy drawers and baggy pants no more. This is a decree by Wildwood. I will be in Wildwood, and I'm going to report there in August and tell you what I see. Maybe I'll do a little video and show a video when I come uh, come to the August or September show. But that's big for Wildwood, something new, fashion no-no. I want to follow up uh, on two things, and then we're going to go to break. First of all, the Father's Day show last month, we talked about men's fragrances a fragrance that my mother and I both picked out that we thought was great was Tom Ford's Noir. Boy, were we, we right. It sold out all over the place. That was a new fragrance for Tom Ford, and that's how good it was. When I went to Nordstrom a couple of weeks before Father's Day, I checked in, and they told me that Givenchy, gentleman only, was still there, but barely. So we're going to report again next year. We've been doing pretty good with that, with tracking and predicting the fragrances. And an update on one of our favorite people, our roaming correspondent, Evelyn Valdez. Evelyn is an amazing fashion icon. She is visually impaired. She just made her dreams come true and got the job of a lifetime at the Department of Veteran Affairs in Washington, D.C. She just moved about two weeks ago. So she sent me an email. She was out shopping. Uh, she told me what she got. She did shop at BB, by the way, which I just mentioned was going to have a good sale. She said that she got a beautiful dress that was $228 full price. She got it for $90. It was a sapphire blue sleeveless sheath dress. She decided to wear that her first day at work. She wore it, she says, with silver stud earrings that were square. And she also wore it with a silver infinity ring. I guess she was a big smash, and I just wanted to let her know that wearing the color blue means that you are serene and peaceful, and in that tone of sapphire, it's invigorating. So she made a nice, exciting entrance, but was very polished and very professional. She really knows how to dress. This is a big, big career move for Evelyn. We wish her the best. We know she's going to look gorgeous. She also put on Facebook when she got her cubicle, which she was very excited about. She actually wore a hot pink blazer from BB. Oh, I'm sorry. The sapphire dress was from BCBG. The hot pink blazer she got was from BB, and she wore that to christen her cubicle on the first day. Best of luck, Evelyn. We will see you after the break, and I will be talking about the town and country apothecary and stores like it that might be in your neighborhood. See you in a few minutes. We'll be right back with more of Looking Good Without Looking right after these messages. Let's do it, do it, do it, do it. Here we come, here we go. We gotta rock, 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 rock. Easy come, easy go. Now we on top, 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 top. shot, body rock. Rockin' don't stop, stop, stop. Back to looking good without looking. Here's Linda. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Well, we're going to be talking today about stores that really fill a multi-generational purpose that could be in your hometown. And one such store is the Town & Country Apothecary, which is in downtown Ridgewood, New Jersey. This is a store that's been around a long time probably an outgrowth of an old-time pharmacy down in the center of town. Look around in your town to see if you have a store like this. Sure, you can get your prescription filled here, and you can get a lot of other things that you need, like sunscreen and Band-Aids and and cards and little gifts for the home and, and things like that. But Town & Country Apothecary also has a world class makeup fragrance counter for men, women, tweens, teens, and kids. 
I want to give the phone number of the Town and Country Apothecary if you'd like to see this beloved and historic store in downtown Ridgewood. It is 201-652-0013. It's at 60 East Ridgewood Ave in Ridgewood, New Jersey. So for men, they have a lot of skincare there. They have Jack Black, The Art of Shaving, Clinique for Men, Clarence for Men, B. Caymans, and Ahava for Men. They have a baby line. And a lot of adults use this line, according to Don Puente over at Town & Country Apothecary. They use it because their skin is sensitive. These are products that are very, very good children's products that are, contain a lot of natural ingredients. They are by Noodle & Boo, Mostella, Dr. Robin. They do have baby gifts there. They have cosmetics bags, totes, scarves. They have a lot of makeup. They have Estee Lauder. They have Philosophy. They have Smashbox. They have Clinique. They have a lot of brands of makeup. And while I mentioned people may not be familiar with Smashbox, Smashbox makeup is a very high-end line, very trendy. I should probably be wearing Smashbox right now because it's HD makeup. It's for when you're on Skype or when you're when you're doing a presentation or even the anchor people and the actors all wear it. It was developed at a photo studio in California where they were doing a lot of headshots and different shots, modeling shots. And what they did is they developed their own makeup line at Smashbox Studios. So that is the genesis of Smashbox. That is available if you'd like to try it. And that is over at Town & Country Apothecary. That is some place where if you have something like that in your town, I'd love you to get in touch with me and let me know so that we can profile it. Because in these days of big box stores and buying online, it's really nice to get the great customer service that the ladies over at Town & Country Apothecary can give you. In addition to Dawn, I think I had another name here. Let me look here. Diana Ross, not of the Supremes, another Diana Ross is also over there and she will help you. Susan will help you in the vitamins department and in the pharmacy department. Ask for Bob, Jim, Jerry, and Joe. Thank you very much, Town & Country Apothecary, for all your years of service to multi-generations of Ridgewoodites and other people in North Jersey. Lenny, have you ever gone over there? No, okay. Lenny has not been over there. Not that Lenny needs any skin care. He is just gorgeous as is. But if he ever did, he could go over there in a pinch. I am going to ask Lenny to bring on my special guest right now, who is Cheryl Echeverria, the owner of Echeverria Travel, so that we can talk a little bit about vacations. If you would like to ask Cheryl a question or myself a question, we are at 888-572-0141. Cheryl, are you there? Hi, Linda. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Wonderful. Oh, so am I after I just came back from the fantastic cruise. I want to tell everybody that I actually booked a cruise with Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl was kind enough to take me and Johanna on a ship last year that was docked in New York. What was it, the jewel or the gem? It was the gem. It was the gem, the Norwegian gem. Cheryl is a travel agent and owner of Echeveria Travel. She has her own show on throughourrise.org. And welcome to the Looking Good Without Looking show, Cheryl. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, I had a fantastic time. This show is about fashion and personal style, so... I thought we might start with a couple of things about that and what to pack and things. Cheryl, what do you suggest? What do you think are the, is the number one, two, and three thing you should pack when you're going on a cruise? Oh, goodness. Uh, number one, um, comfortable clothes when you're first going on the cruise. Uh, you're, you're not going to the air, you know, unless you're flying in that day, something comfortable you can Wear, wear a nice pair of sandals, relax, because uh, uh, you're going to be at the port all day. So uh, you want to make sure that you're in comfortable attire. Uh, pack a bathing suit, of course, 
And uh, depending on your style, uh, a lot of the cruise lines now do not have a formal night, but a uh, nice skirt and blouse, or if you want to dress up at nice uh, at night, uh, a nice uh, pantsuit or a nice dress. And for the man, uh, maybe a jacket and slacks. They don't have to get a tuxedo anymore. Um, so uh, th those are the, you know, things to have uh, to pack when you're the three three things that come to mind anyway. Yeah, I agree. And I, I have to say, you know, Cheryl, I packed carefully. As you know, we've talked about this before. I would have to say I agree with you. I think one of the most important things to bring with you is definitely comfortable shoes, because even though you're on a cruise ship, you do an awful lot of walking. If you cannot get the elevator because there's a lot of people there, you end up taking the stairs. And I'll tell you, you end up doing a lot of walking, even on your excursions. Isn't that right? Oh, yeah. People mm -hmm. say, oh, you're going on a cruise and you're going to eat all day and gain five to seven pounds. Not with uh, on the cruise ships. I mean, you're you're walking and you're, you're not in a race to get there. I don't want to get people scared. Oh, my goodness. They got a lot of walking to do. But you know what? It, it's nice. You could uh, leisurely walk through the shops or through the lounges or whatever. But, um, you know, they're, they're, they're long ships. And uh, you actually do lose a couple of pounds while you're you're doing all that walking on the ships. Yeah, it sure is. And you can have your choice to do as many activities as you want. Um, my husband and I are very active, so we took advantage of the gym and we took advantage of a lot of walking. So we had during the day like workout gear that we would wear. Um, you can get laundry service on the ship. Now, I was on the brand new Norwegian Breakaway, which was fantastic. And in my room, Cheryl, in the shower, there was a little built-in clothesline in the shower that you could pull across and you could actually hand wash and lay things over that line in the shower. Did you notice that in all the rooms there? Yeah, they're in all the rooms. So if if you want to wring something out or even maybe wash out your bathing suit or something like that, uh, you can do that and hang it up in the shower. Yes, I thought that was very, very nice. Of course, they do have a laundry day. Probably a few days in, they give you this bag and they say you can stuff the bag with everything you want and they give you a set price and they return it beautifully in a basket. It's all folded and really nice. So if you do need something washed or you just want to bring a little bit of clothes and, and, and rewash them because you're going on a plane or whatever, you can do that. I have to admit, Cheryl, I was a little bit overdressed for some of the nights. Um, I think since I've gone on a cruise the last time, Things have gotten a little less formal. Like you said, I think that's really good advice. I don't even think Gary really needed a jacket too much. He could have really gotten away without one. Just worn like a nice button down shirt tucked in with a nice pair of dress pants. Some of the restaurants did not want you to come in in shorts, just a few restaurants. So, you know, plan your cruise really. And if you do use a travel agent, like I would re highly recommend Cheryl. She was fantastic. Right, Cheryl? Yeah. Thank you so much. You I just want to uh, reiterate what you said. Um, in the evenings in the restaurants, you want to not wear shorts or tanks and flip-flops. Uh, all of them still have that kind of, you know, that, that fine line, especially in the evening and, you know, during the afternoon or in the morning. They're not as strict, but if you're eating in the dining rooms and stuff, I would definitely wear... Uh, do not wear, you know, shorts or tanks or flip flops. You know, wear wear uh, comfortable, casual, but not as they say, sloppy, kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're getting a lot more uh, laid back. Even uh, the cruise lines such as Princess and uh, some of the more luxury liners, they they may have one, you know, formal night, but they also have other options if you don't want to dress up as well. Yes, and if you are going on a cruise, just what Cheryl said, you can take your choice now of just going. If, if you went to the buffet the whole time, you could really get away in flip-flops, right, Cheryl? Even at night, if you went to the oh, buffet. Oh, yeah, definitely at night. I mean, if you're gonna, that's going to be at the buffet, then, you know, because uh, the buffet also has where you could sit outside on, on the deck. Uh, you, could, you could get away with being in flip-flops 
flip flops and stuff. I'm talking more of the main, the the dining yeah. rooms and the specialty restaurants that you want to make sure you're, you know, you dress appropriately after five o'clock at night. Yes, absolutely. And another thing to bring a hat. Ladies and guys, you have to have a hat because if you're sailing, you're normally sailing south and it is going to be blisteringly hot. You also need sunscreen because, as I said on Cheryl's show, if you buy sunscreen on the ship, you will be spending a lot of money. So anything like that, you should bring from home. Bring your sunglasses. Again, if you need anything kind of sun related on that ship, you're going to pay a lot. But, Cheryl, I did find some bargains. Do you want to know what I bought on board? I would love to hear what you bought on board. Okay. I'm going to give you the scoop. Uh, first of all, the shops were really nice on board the ship. And you'll find this on all the ships. They had a lot of cameras. They had men, a huge men's watch department. They had women's fine jewelry, costume jewelry, clothes. They had gifts that you could buy for kids. And they had a nice costume jewelry area, and they also had a wonderful cosmetic shop. Now, you may be saying, oh, Cheryl and Linda, you got to be kidding. How expensive was that to buy stuff on board? Well, what they have on board the ships when they're out at sea is when the shop is open, because then it's in international waters, and it can be tax-free and duty-free. Now, duty-free doesn't mean too much to us, but tax-free does. So, for example... You've heard us talk on the show a lot about Lancome, the greatest mascaras they have. I bought my mascara while I was there, Hypnos Mascara. It's the same price as it is in the department stores here in the U.S., but there's no tax on it. So you're saving a couple of dollars. You can't get this for less than I bought this on the cruise ship, but you're actually saving the tax money. So you could find out ahead of time if they carry your favorite brands and why not stock up. They had fragrances, the same thing. Now, things like that don't usually go on sale, especially the cosmetics. But you know what else I liked, Cheryl? What was that? Every day that those shops were open, in the little, they give you, on any ship, they give you like an itinerary for the day, what's going on that day that you can check. And you can see what what activities you want to do and where you might want to eat. But every single day those shops were open, there was a listing of different brand names of jewelry and items that were on sale that day only. So one day, Swarovski was on sale. Now, I'm I'm actually holding up a little Swarovski box, Cheryl. What I actually got was... There's a Swarovski store at most every mall. It's beautiful crystal. I'm going to show this little necklace I got. It's a pink enamel heart necklace with crystals all around it. It's a small necklace on a sterling chain. This was 10% off and no tax. You can't find that at the Swarovski store here at the mall. You're not going to get 10% off. So the set, right, Cheryl? No, and... uh, uh it depends on each ship has their own jewelry store as well. I I always get my watches on the ship. I always get my jewelry, um, and also uh, depending on where you're cruising to in the gift shops, they also have like you went to Bermuda. I went to Bermuda. They they stock up on a lot of things that are sold in Bermuda, like Lily Bermuda, which is the famous perfume made oh, in yes. Bermuda, hold, which hold which. That. I, Hold that thought, Cheryl. We're going to go to break, and we're going to talk about what to buy in Bermuda when we get back. We'll be right back. Linda will be right back after we take a four-minute break to save our files for podcasts. Stay right where you are. Here we come. Here we go. We got to rock, 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 rock. Easy come. Easy go. Now we on top. Feel the shot. Body rock. Rock and don't stop. Back to looking good without looking. Here's Linda. Hi, 
everyone. Welcome back to the show with special guest Cheryl Echeverria, owner of Echeverria Travel and the host of her very own show here at ThroughOurEyes.org. Hi, Cheryl. Hello. Cheryl, hold on. We got a little technical difficulty. So while we're waiting for Cheryl to get back on and Lenny will let me know, we wanted to talk about Lily Bermuda perfume and some things to buy when you're ashore. So hang on to that. But I want to also let everybody know that when you're on the ship, another thing that's really a good deal is to pose for formal pictures. Now, as you walk out in the evenings, the photographers have different backdrops that they have set up with throughout the ship. And you can have as many pictures taken as you want. So you can wear a special outfit one night, you can wear one another night, and you go through the ship and you pose for a picture. The pictures are all printed out and they're in a separate folder where the photo gallery is. And what you do is you go down on your key card on the cruise is your photo gallery number. You go down, you browse through your pictures, you choose whatever pictures you want. Now these are professional photographs, which you would pay a sitting fee for. And you can buy the photographs and you can even buy them and then get a a USB um, key that has all your pictures on it. So you can bring them home and you can put them on Facebook and you can make your own prints. So it's really a good deal. I'm going to show you what I mean by the backdrops. I'll be holding the pictures up and I will describe those for those who are visually impaired. This is an example of uh, my husband and I on a more casual night walking by a backdrop and we went in front of it and they snapped this picture and I bought it and I bought it on the key card. It's really nice. Like when do you get a chance to have a professional photograph or when you're even with your significant other long enough to sit for a photograph? It's not something you probably would do. So that's a type of photograph. And then a lot of times on different aspects of the cruise out by the pool or if they have different items like they had water slides and they had this cool ropes course that people went on and my husband went on the ropes course. Now at two junctures on the ropes course they actually had photographers up in the air on this course with a camera. One thing about the Norwegian breakaway is there's a little plank so you actually you're all hooked in you're safe but you can actually walk out over the ocean And there is an automatic photograph that's taken of you, kind of like if you've ever gone to an amusement park and you're going down the log fume and they bloom and they take that picture and you look horrified. Same thing. But there was another point where a photographer was there at the point where you have to hold on to your harness and you go through a zip line, which is a real great sensation. I think the ropes course would be great if you were visually impaired. It's very challenging if you're not. It's probably it's it's a lot probably a lot scarier for those who have vision because you could see how am I going to do this? I'm on a little line. I want to ask Cheryl if she, oh she's back. Oh Cheryl, I'm going to show this picture of Gary on the zip line that they took this picture. I think it's fantastic. So for the viewers who are of sight, this is my husband going down the zip line in midair. Cheryl, did you go on the ropes course? No, we didn't have enough time to do it, and it was a little windy when we went on that two-day event. I, okay. I'm taking it that Gary went on the ropes on the breakaway. Yes, he did, and he went on the and and they snapped a great photograph, which is really neat. And we went and purchased it. I was just saying what a good deal it is to get photographs done on the ship because they're real professional looking. Oh, and they're wonderful. You wait for the very last day before. You get off the ship, and they always have specials. So I know you were talking about this before to look in your itinerary, or if you're visually impaired, just talk to your uh, either your steward or speak to the person uh, with the access department, and they'll give you a daily itinerary that you can either by phone or at the desk and explain to you what's going on. But all, every day throughout the cruise, even the last two days, You'll have discounts at the jewelry stores, um, on the pictures. So there's always some kind of special going on. And uh, Nelson wanted to walk the plank. In fact, he says hello, Linda. Oh, hi. But uh, 
It was a little windy when we went, and coming back, we had some rain, so we didn't even see the fireworks that oh, on our cruise. Yeah. But um, uh, I'm glad he had a good time. You didn't do the uh, ropes? Well, I went up there, but I, I had an injury to my shoulder, and I knew I would fall off the ropes, and oh, I was okay. going to you know, jam my shoulder up, so I actually walked back down. But I wanted to ask, well, you mentioned the itinerary. They gave us a printed thing every Kind of a newsletter is what I'm talking about. Cheryl, right. is that available in Braille? Well, what it's not available in Braille yet. Uh, okay. I know they. Uh, I work very closely with Norwegian Cruise Lines. They're tr- because they change every single day. That's the problem with it, mm-hmm. and they never know, you know, if it's bad weather out, if they're going to change inside. But they do have other ways of getting their communication across. They got an access officer on every single cruise ship, which some some cruise ships have, some some cruise ships may not. They mm-hmm. have uh, it available on the phone, so you can call into a number and speak to somebody. Or um, just uh, go down every day to the concierge desk or the uh, guest services desk, and they'll let you know what's available. So even though it's not available in, in Braille yet, which we're working on, uh, there are other forms of way of getting the information every day. Okay, great. Oh, that's good to know. And Cheryl, you were instrumental in getting Braille menus on the ships, correct? Oh, yes. Uh, me and, of course, being with the NFB, great use, as you know, because you and Joanna went last year with us on the GEM. I've been working with Norwegian Cruise Line since 2009 to have their ships more accessible, and they're doing a wonderful job about it. Yes, they are. And and while we, let's veer into that for a minute before we get into Lily Bermuda. Uh, now, Cheryl is visually impaired. Johanna is visually impaired. I am not, but my daughter is. And my daughter is wheelchair bound. She's multiply disabled. Um, and she can't push the wheelchair herself. So I noticed a couple things I wanted to ask you. First of all, on this ship, which is very interesting, if you have never been on a cruise ship before, those of us with sight will get off the elevator, go in the wrong door, and not know whether we are moving toward the front of the ship or the back of the ship. And if you think this is not a problem, it really is. We will walk around for hours trying to find our room. It's the craziest thing. But I loved what they did with this ship. On the carpeting, they actually have little tiny fish that are kind of knitted into the carpeting, and they they swim up towards the front of the ship. So you just look down and you could tell which way the front is and which way the back. It really saves you a few steps. Now, Cheryl, how as a visually impaired person can you figure out if you're heading towards the front of the ship or the back? I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> it, de- it depends on the uh, the signage that they have on the ship. Sometimes they... On the breakaway, they have to finish putting the overlays on what I'm saying, the signage. It's where you have the numbers going up and down on, on the staterooms or whatever level you're on. And right. they'll have the numbers raised and the directional going either left or right. So on the breakaway, they didn't have that updated yet, but they, they uh, are, are doing that as we speak. And... Um, you know, after a while, I know myself, after a while, okay, my room is up near, we were near the casino, so I had to walk towards the front of the ship and then go up. And the the restaurants like the uh, Manhattan Room and Cagney's were towards the back of the ship. So, so the ships themselves, if you know you're going towards the restaurants, you're going towards the back of the ships. If you're going towards the entertainment, you're going through the front of the ships. So that's the way that they kind of explained it to me when I was on the ship. So they're going to put Braille overlays on all the signs that are on that ship. They're working on it, yes. Okay, good. That's that's great. And I wanted to give everybody a tip. Uh, Cheryl and I spoke about this before the show. But if you there are wheelchair accessible cabins throughout the ship. But I particularly liked floor five. And this is where Sean and Martin, who are cruise consultants on the ship, uh, we had a conversation with them, especially with Sean. And Sean said that the fifth floor 
has very wide aisles, and it really is true. That's where the medical center was. There are four nice rooms on the fifth floor. Um, myself, I would prefer that for my daughter. Of course, there are wheelchair accessible ships uh, rooms throughout the ship. There also are studio cabins on the ship, which is for one person, which also helps you save money when you're on a ship. And those studio cabins had their own lounge. Yes, they did. And I have to say, I did purposely have a wheelchair accessible room um, when I did the two-day travel agent cruise back in May because I wanted to make sure that it, uh, it had all the, since it was a new ship, I wanted to make sure what was different between this ship and their other ships and how the rooms were, were set up. So that way when I came back, I could let, okay, the, the wheelchair accessible rooms, which I try to state there are four people that are in wheelchairs if you have other disabilities where you don't need to be in a wheelchair or a scooter, you can have other things in your room, like if you're deaf or if you have other disabilities that, you know, you're not uh, a mobile, dis- have a mob- mobile disability, you could use a regular room since there's very few of the wheelchair accessible rooms that... You know, those those are very important to keep those for people that are in wheelchairs and scooters and all that. But I, I purposely had one uh, to see that uh, on the balcony they have the little, like a little lip that goes out into the balcony itself. Uh, so somebody in a wheelchair could get out on the balcony. It's also their, the closet space is lower. So somebody that's permanently in a wheelchair, they don't have to you know, try to stretch and reach to put their clothes up on a hanger. Everything is to their level. Uh, Rolling showers, the bathroom sinks, uh, the TV, everything is lower. So that way it's easier to unpack and put your things away and easier to get to instead of trying to, you know, uh, put things on higher shelves, which you may not be able to do yourself. So I yeah. found that very, very interesting. I wanted to also bring up the fact that, and I stress this a lot because I'm also a guide dog user, and they do have relief area boxes for your dog. They will not put them in the room. Uh, I know at one point they used to put, if you have a balcony, and they'll put the bal- uh, boxes out on the balcony, but because the chips will, you know, if it's a windy day, they'll fly all over your balcony or fly into the water they do keep it at a um there's an area where the crew go back and forth between uh your rooms and they have their own elevator area and stairs and stuff that they keep the boxes and it's air conditioned and all that kind of area so it's out of the way but it's close enough to your room so you're not searching or trying to find an area for your dog to go to the bathroom That is such a good point. I didn't even think of that, but I know exactly what areas you're talking about. I have to say, I really, you know, kudos to Norwegian. They did. It's a beautiful ship. Uh, They really have done a lot to make it uh, really work for a whole bunch of different types of people. And uh, it really, they did a terrific job. I really think they hit the mark. It was really wonderful. If you get a chance to go, I think you should. And uh, Joe, uh, I'd like to ask you, Cheryl, about Lily Bermuda. Now, that's something that Cheryl told me about. I did not get to the perfume factory, which is in St. George, but I did pick up a couple of bottles, and it really is wonderful perfume. So tell us a little bit about that, Cheryl. Well, Lily Bermuda, I found uh, the first time we went to Bermuda in October. It's their own perfume, and it's, it's made in the town of St. George's which is uh, Bermuda itself is only 21 miles long and about three miles wide. And when you're cruising, you actually cruise into Dockyard, uh, the Royal Dockyard, and you can take either their public transportation or you can take a tour and go to St. George's, which is uh, the very historical area of Bermuda. It was actually used during the famous blockades during the Civil War and Revolutionary War, and they have reenactments there. And there's a shop there that uh, was started in the early 1930s and 40s. 
uh, by a gentleman. I, I don't remember his name, but he created uh, from all the flowers and the scents of Bermuda. Uh, the original scent is called Lily Bermuda, which is light and floral, and it just smells like you're in the Caribbean. And every time we go, I get a little 10-pack of all the different little little fragrances and they come in, um, I guess, very, I guess, a one ounce vial and everything. But you just just need a little dab behind your ears and on your on your your pulses on your on your wrists and everything, and it just smells wonderful. In fact, Nelson sometimes even wears my perfume because they're, you know, it it could be unisex as well. Some of them are a little more, you know, womanly or uh, more. Uh, I'm going to say uh, something more that a woman would wear, but most of them could be, you know, worn unisex, and it, it's just a beautiful scent to wear. It's funny that you said that because when I was in the little shop, which I was over by the, the, the Royal Naval Dockyards, and they had a little shop there that you could get off the ship and buy the perfume at, I did notice they came out with a new one, and I said to Gary, gee, this is this is – getting the perfume for two lady friends of mine so I got the Lily Bermuda but they have a new one tell him and it's supposed to smell like the waters of Bermuda I, I know can't the think one of the you're name talking about Sweetwater Sweetwater yeah I have a I have a uh, I actually treated myself uh, in April when we went with Joe Ruffalo in the NFB in New Jersey I actually got a, a regular nice sized bottle of it and I just love it it's just oh, such wow. a pretty, pretty scent. Now, are you planning any other cruises for the NFB that we should announce or any group cruises you want to talk about, Cheryl? Well, I don't have any specific for any NFB things, but uh, the NFB Travel and Tourism Division, which I'm president of, we're going to the national parks of Utah, uh, Nevada, and Arizona in October, and that's uh, October 9th through the 13th. And we still are taking people that want to go. Uh, last day for deposit on that is July 12th because we're going to National Convention on Sunday. And we're going to wait and see if anybody else wants to go. And if anybody's interested, you can call me at 631-456-5394. And uh, I'll be glad to send you out any information you want on that. Uh, we're also going to Ireland for one week, May 2014, during Mother's Day. So that all my trips that I do, even though I'm with the NFB, all my trips that I do, um, they're for everybody. I like to get people that are blind, not blind, together so people learn about people with disabilities and everybody can travel independently and everybody can have a good time learning from each other. I, I think that's terrific, and I have to tell you, you must have had a lot of fun with Joe Ruffalo on that cruise. We did. We did. Joe and Jerry Marino and uh, we, uh, Lynn Reynolds and so many other people that went with us. We had a wonderful time in Bermuda. There was a, the weather wasn't perfect, but you know what? It was the people that made the trip. We yeah. had such a great time and laughed so hard. In fact, we we celebrated Joe's uh, wedding anniversary, Joe and Judy's wedding anniversary, and we celebrated my birthday, and we celebrated Madeline and Jerry Marino's uh, wedding anniversary. So we had something every night we celebrated, and uh, happy belated anniversary to you and Gary. Uh, thank you so much, Cheryl. Cheryl, I wanted to mention something about Bermuda. Now, you know, you heard about us talk about the ship a lot, and we could go on and on, believe me, but... Uh, what I also like to borrow Bermuda is that when you get off the ship, it's very inexpensive to travel around. In fact, on the ship, you can buy bus passes and you can buy a ferry pass. And the bus, when you get out of the ship, when you go out the gangplank and you go out onto the ground from the ship, you can have your choice of renting a scooter, getting in a taxi, getting in a bus, getting on a tour bus and getting in a ferry. And it's real inexpensive. Didn't you find that was so great, Cheryl? Uh, that is why Nelson and I love Bermuda over all the other places that we've gone on. Uh, because it, the, the public transportation there, normally when you go outside the country, you're a little, you know, it's a little scary anyway, whether or not, oh, can I 
can I get around with the public transportation? And in Bermuda, you've got the pink bus that goes to St. George's, or you have the white bus that goes to Hamilton, and you can't get lost. Or you could take the, like you said, as soon as you get off off the ship, you got two ferries. You got one ferry that goes to Hamilton, which is the famous beach where they have the pink sand, and they also have shopping, like similar to like Miami kind of style shopping. Or they have the the ferry that goes to St. George's, and you don't have to go for an excursion. You don't have to pay the excursion on the. On the cruise ships, you don't have to pay for an excursion through your travel agent. Go and enjoy and, you know, walk around. It's very safe, Bermuda. Uh, it, it's, it, and you're there, and it, it, it's like you're talking to New Yorkers because you don't realize they have any accents there at all, and they love having us there. Uh, they also have it in the area of the uh, Royal Naval Dockyard when you first come in. It's a very, I'm going to say, art community there. They, they're very welcoming. Um, they they know me there. So if you go in and say, hey, I know Cheryl at Chiveria, um, especially if you're blind, they'll, they'll give you hands-on, um, you know, they'll let you touch the art and explain how it was made. So they're they're very wonderful people, the Bermudians. So well, so I, are you, I love so going are you, there. Cheryl. I was just I'm saying, so-, so are you, Cheryl. And I really want to thank you for being on the show tonight, Cheryl. Um, I would highly recommend using Cheryl as a travel agent. I'm going to have her say send us out of the show in a minute. But I also want to remind everybody that uh, Cheryl and I and all the other shows will not be on in July. We will be back on our regular scheduled times in August. We want to wish everybody a beautiful summer. And I would like to say bon voyage. If you need any vacation tips, call or Facebook the Looking Good Without Looking dot com page. And I will see you then. Cheryl, thank you so much. And please take us out of the Looking Good Without Looking show tonight. Thank you, Linda. I like to say thank you to Linda and Lenny and the WTOE network. Uh, remember, uh, I'm on the first Wednesday of of the month at eight o'clock p.m. on the same station you're listening to, and and you can call it at one eight 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 five seven two zero one four one. And remember, Echeverria Travel, your one on one travel agency, getting you there safely from pole to pole. Thank you, and have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Looking Good Without Looking is produced by Linda Zani Thomas in cooperation with the WTOE Radio Network. All words, ideas, and content expressed on the Looking Good Without Looking are solely those of Linda Zani Thomas and not necessarily those of the National Federation of the Blind, the Northeast New Jersey Chapter, or the WTOE Internet Radio Network. To contact Linda about your personal style journey, Email her at lindazani at AOL.com, L-I-N-D-A-Z-A-N-I at AOL.com, or join the Looking Good Without Looking Facebook page. The previous WTOE radio podcast is a commercial-free version of our live broadcast brought to you every Wednesday evening starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at throughthruourours.org.